Of course they're silent. They're embarrassed for themselves. They all sit around and they get into these complicated political uh, analysis of what the hell is going on, not really understanding. If we look at things through Western eyes, and you can't do that over looking at those issues over there. We're just not in the game to understand what's going on. We want to support. We want to think we understand what's going on. We really don't know what's going on there. We never lived in that environment. We're not post-Soviet kids, you know, with their parents growing up with all their fears and restrictions and everything else. We had all our doors open. We can say what we want, think what we want. We can write articles in magazines and how this is all going to turn out and get paid for the wonderful work we're doing, analyzing all the politics and everything else and walk away a little taller, grander, and everyone turns around and says, oh, aren't they smart? But when it comes from a Western mind, I, you know, I, uh, you got to go there and live there with these people to really understand that small talk and, and uh, all the things that have changed the Ukrainian character over there. And so we, we, we're not, we're not in the loop really. We, 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 we can't understand. We really can't understand. You really have to go and live there and uh, understand how these people process and how they think. And it's not how we think and how we process things. Not at all. Now, their processing is the, uh, the instinct of survivalism, if there is such a word. Um, I just remember when we were trying to do a business deal in Ukraine. And the way they would look at you was very simple. We got to get this person. We got to pull everything out of this person as much as we can and run for the bloody hills because he might not come back the next time because they had no trust or faith in anyone or anything. So the, they were growing up with this culture that if it's in front of you, you better grab it and head for the hills. That's why any business deal just dragged on and on. How many people lost their pants? I never lost my pants because I, I, I finally understood that I didn't understand them and they didn't understand me and they had no faith in, in developing a relationship that will grow and grow and grow. And that's what I wanted, but they couldn't see it. And I didn't understand that I wasn't even in protected in that environment. When I saw eventually that me, hey, I'm out on the limb and they're, they're sawing away at the other end because they can, they, they want to grab whatever I brought. I don't care if I fall down. And that's the way it is, you know, and it still is in a big way. They look at you with uh, envy that, you know, you grow up in a society with uh, access to everything. They grow up in a society with very little access to anything. And uh, when they see an opportunity, they, they, they think that it's only a one-time shot at, at whatever it is that's in front of them or under their nose. And we, we accept everyone, and we accept that everyone is bringing us a sense of that hope, you know, that things are going to start getting better. And yet there are other things being played out there. And they come over looking for support, you know, in any way, whether it's financial or or be interviewed or, or whatever they they always show their best side but uh it's just we can't understand we don't really understand each other here we sit back as canadians of which maybe 1.2 percent of the population has ever held a gun or wore army boots or khaki clothes i mean officially to be part of a, of a, you know, maneuver of some kind. Uh, I mean, what do we know about the military mind here in Canada? We're there, all of them have served. Maybe this last generation, there's a number of them, but I look at my family, most of the men served. Not that they wanted to, but they served. That's what got their education, their technical background. And so when we're talking about Sauchin was military mind. I don't tell you the truth. I don't know what the hell that's supposed to mean. And the question is, has she been set up in this or is this really up front where they, they followed her and they recorded her? Or is this something, is this another setup for us to think that, you know, you got this redneck babe in there and uh, she's going to put it all, all in the front by uh, starting another Maidan only within the foothold that are there rather than up the streets. I, I, I really don't, I don't really know what to believe anymore. 
it's just like her rushing off to Donbass and negotiating, coming back. Uh, why the hell didn't they arrest her then? I think it's also the reality that there isn't too much in the real sense of diaspora. What the hell can we do? Okay, we can gather money. We can we can have conscience. We can put political pressure. But these issues with Saakashvili and these issues with Sauchenko, uh, where are you going to put the pressure? Where, who's going to put the pressure to make a difference? No one. Yeah, it is kind of interesting. And it's, it's sort of going back to that. We seem to rally behind everyone, and every time the shit hits the fan, everyone realizes we always jump the gun because we just have a shallow understanding of everything going on. Even I, I just remember uh, Yulia Timoshenko. That everybody was all over the place. Yulia, Yulia, Yulia. They wouldn't sit back and think about it. But Poroshenko well, was the best Ukrainian president we ever had. It was Yulia that screwed him. I mean, she was the one that's supposed to have been behind his back. And since she was trying to make deals with Yanukovych, and she's still in parliament. And and she still wants to run for, for president, which is amazing. And yet the Ukrainian community is not saying anything. Silent on that, too. You know, it's really unusual. And I, and I just think that uh, the diaspora is realizing that uh, there isn't too much they can do there.